race day here in suburban Melbourne. It's vintage radio controlled cars. The bodies have been polished, the batteries have been charged, the drivers are ready to go. The golden age of radio controlled cars began back in the early 1980s with names like Grasshopper, Hornet and The Frog. They were realistic, durable, easy to assemble and simple to repair. But most of all, they were affordable. When I was a kid, my parents bought me this for Christmas. Yeah. And I was hooked. <laughs> I crashed it after 10 minutes of opening the packet into a gutter and broke it. But uh, that was it. It was an interest that I had oh, from, a, from a boy. And once I could afford it, Bought my first car and started running around basically the backyard and heard of a couple of other guys who were doing the same. One of them actually worked for the council and he got his contacts to actually get this, this bit of land. And they're off in the Knox off-road vintage enduro, a four-hour endurance race that tests the reliability of these old cars as well as the concentration and skill of the expert drivers. Just behind me here is Race Control. They've got a sophisticated computer in there that tracks every car as it crosses the line every lap so we know how fast they're going and how many laps they've done. And the great part about coming to an event like this is these guys behind me swapping parts, swapping expertise and sharing each other's collections. Every time you use it, you, you know, you need to rebuild it and uh, service the transmission and the bearings and, you know, cleaning things and uh, just basically inspecting, the, you know, worn parts aren't going to break in the next run. So are you an engineer? Are you an electrician? How do you know all this stuff? I'm stuff? a carpenter. <laughs> I'm a carpenter by trade, but uh, I guess I grew up in, you know, in, the early, in the early days with these cars and uh, the obsession took hold. Um, as, as time has gone by, you, you know, you've bought newer cars, but uh, it seems we've all gone back to the older cars again. How many cars have you got tucked away in Canberra? Um, yeah, uh, probably just under 400 now. <laughs> I've sold off a few recently. Oh. Bit of a tragic, been, been racing since 1977 and sort of been really seriously collecting since probably, maybe about 96, 97. Many of these early models are now really collectible and they can fetch really big prices. So why risk them out on the track? This is an original car underneath. In fact, it's, this one's never seen, seen the dirt. Um, right down to the original battery. But then you build what we term runners. Um, and again, this is a good example. I raced this, albeit in a very slow class recently, at the Victorian State Titles and actually won. And this car's 26 years old. So you can still get them up and, up and running, but you've got to put up with the damage. And racing can be very gruelling on these little vehicles. We have a truck held together with stitch tape. We have a three-wheeled RC can. We have a Manta Ray with no wings. This is the second year that the clubs run a vintage race day. And for a lot of these guys, it's a trip down memory lane with these old cars. But win or lose today, there's no question about the amount of fun that this sort of collecting can bring. I told you this was the winning car. <laughs>